pica disease of ground nerve this pica disease of ground nerve it is a disease it can occur on the all the ground nerve growing areas of the world due to this disease the loss may be up to 50% or more than 50% it is a fungal disease and this disease it is caused by the fungi and name of that fungi is the sarcospora personata and sarcospora arachidicola these are the two species of this fungus which can attacks on the infected plants and the most favorable weather conditions that is hot and the wet conditions they are favorable for the growth of this disease or formation of these spots and the spots which are developed on the groundnut leaf and these spots they are called as the tikka disease of groundnut the spots which are developed they are dark brown to black color and they are formed by the fungi and these these spots are known as the tikka disease of the groundnut there are <coughs> the two species the sarcospora arachidicola and sarcospora personata they can occurs throughout the groundnut growing areas and depending upon the which conditions and as well as the weather conditions the groundnut leaf spots they form early leaf spot and the late leaf spot and they are commonly called as the tikka disease they can cause nearly complete defoliation and yield more than 50% yield loss can be takes place and these disease spots they are developed during the hot and wet weather conditions then the this disease will be studied with the help of these uh, various points that is it can includes the introduction of this disease then symptoms causal organism disease cycle and the control measures of the disease the, about the introductory part the next part is the symptoms of the disease symptoms means the external visible expressions of the disease or in the pathogenic conditions it is called as symptoms or it is the external visible characters external visible expressions in pathogenic conditions it is called as symptoms there are different types of symptoms they are developed on the infected plants and the first symptom appear when the plants are one or two months old due to excessive spotting on the leaves there is a gradual weakening and resulting in defoliation of the leaves the first symptom is the appearance of pale areas on the upper surface of the older leaves later the spots become dark and brown to black in color first that is the spots they can be developed they are brown in color and later on the yellow halos yellow halos means the yellow rings they can be developed around these spots these are the spots they are first they are the brown pale yellow then later on they becomes dark brown and finally they becomes black in color and spots which are developed on these uh leaves they can be developed by the two different species of the fungi and the name of that fungi is the sarcospora personata and sarcospora arachidicola the another symptoms they can be observed the <coughs> the first the upper surface of the leaves the spots they become pale yellow and later on the spots becomes dark brown to black color spots they can be also formed then scientist woodrop 1955 designated the disease which can be caused by sarcospora arachidicola they can develop the early spot and the spots which are developed by sarcospora personata 
the spots which are developed they are late and due to the excessive spotting on the leaves there is weakening of the foliage and results in deep foliation what is deep foliation deep foliation means falling of the leaves due to the infection or due to these spots when severity of these spots they can increases and number of spots are more and the due to the formation of the spots the photosynthetic area get reduced and due to the reduction in the photosynthetic area there is weakening of the leaves it can be takes place leaves becomes weak and there is a deep foliation can be takes place that is leaves they becomes dropped down or leaves they becomes fall down then smaller number of nuts the nut due to this the deep foliation of the leaves the number of nuts nuts means senga senga jay te senga त्याची संख्या इथे कमी होते अँड दिस नट्स दे आर बिकम स्मॉलर इन साइज दे आर रिड्यूस्ड इन साइज देन द स्पॉट्स दे कैन बी डेव्हलप्ड ऑन द ऑल द पार्ट्स ऑफ द प्लांट्स दैट इज स्टेम्स लेंडियूज पिटियोल एज वेल एज ऑन द स्टिपल्स द स्पॉट्स दे कैन बी आल्सो फॉर्म अँड द लेसन्स डेव्हलप्ड बाय दिस टू स्पेसीज कैन बी डिस्टिंग्विशड that is cercospora arachidicola forms the circular or irregular reddish brown to brown lesions which are bigger on the lower surface and cercospora personata forms darker brown to black colored spots they are smaller in size and they are almost circular these spots are abundant on the leaves then stipules as well as on the petiole of the plants and <clears throat> the spots which are produced on the lower surface of the leaves are light brown they can be formed by the cercospora arachidicola these cercospora arachidicola they can form the spots on the lower surface of the leaves and cercospora personata they can form this spots on the upper surface of the leaves also so these are the several types of these spots they can be also formed by the two different species and the spots which can be developed by these two different species they are different color the spots developed by cercospora arachidicola they are uh, light brown in color the spots which are developed by the cercospora personata they are dark brown in color and finally they becomes black in color then causal organism which are the causal organism here the causal organism is the the two species of the fungi that is both the species that is cercospora personata and cercospora arachidicola they can form the spots and they can produce mycelium the first mycelium it is the intercellular intercellular means the mycelium which is present in between these cells mycelium which is present in between these cells these are the cells and in between that cells the mycelium or hyphae they can be developed it is called as intercellular mycelium and these intercellular mycelium they can kill or they can enter in these cells and by entering into these cells these mycel this mycelium they can kill the cells and they becomes enter into the cell and forms the intracellular mycelium the mycelium it is the first intercellular then it becomes intracellular intracellular means they can pass into the cell it is called as intracellular mycelium and these mycelium they can grows in the leaves and they form the spots and after taking the ps of infected leaf or that is ts of infected leaf we can observe such structures that is they can show these are the host cells into that this mycelium it can grows and mycelium grows and form the stroma and from that stroma many conidiophores they can be arises and at the this conidiophore they can produce the conidia and these conidia they can be produced by these different fungi these are the conidia of the cercospora personata 
and these are the conidia and conidiophore they can be produced by the another species of the fungi that is uh, that is cercospora uh, arachidicola the conidia which are formed by the cercospora personata they are short and they are one to or two septate or three septate file in case of the conidia they can be formed by the cercospora arachidicola they are elongated they are pointed at both the ends and they have the many septas there is there is about 4 to 12 septas are present how many septas are present to the conidium of the cercospora arachidicola there are about 4 to 12 septas they are also present and this after falling of this conidia, there is the scars they can be remains behind. After falling of the conidia, there is some markings they can be remains and it is called as scars. And after falling of this conidia, there is markings they can be remains, they are called as scars. So these are the this is the conidium of the Sarcospora personata and this is the conidium of the Cercospora arachidicola. This is the, they forms the intercellular and intracellular mycelium. They can be also formed, they can produce a stroma and then there is a, they can form the conidiophore and conidiophore produces the conidia. And conidia they are pointed and they are septed. The mycelium it is also septed. This is about the causal organism. The causal organism it is a fungus and there are two species of the Sarcospora that is Sarcospora arachidicola and the Sarcospora personata. Then next part is the disease cycle. The disease can be caused by the Sarcospora arachidicola and Sarcospora personata. The disease can be transferred by the wind and the spores of these diseases they can be transferred or disseminated by the winds currents then they can attacks on the new crops or they can <coughs> also lie inside the soil and this force they can be remain viable in the soil for a long time and they can attacks on the uh, crops which can be present into that areas when the conditions becomes favorable at that time the spots as well as the fungus which can be remains inside the soil and these spores they can attack on the succeeding crops also then finally after the disease cycle that is the control measures how the disease can be controlled the disease can be controlled first by the using cultural methods that is crop rotation crop rotation that is changing the crop pattern or alternation of the crops that is groundnut, sugarcane, java like that in this way the crops they can be grown in the field it is called as crop rotation and crop rotation it is the best method of the controlling the disease also then the crop residues they can be also removed completely removed from the field the crop residues means that is the parts of the plants that is this is the parts of the plants such as stems leaves they can be completely removed from the field it can also help to reduce the incidence of the disease then <coughs> early planting which can also helps for the reducing the infection and early maturing varieties they can also escape the disease also then disease can be controlled by the using chemicals the spraying and dusting of the chemicals they can also helpful for reducing the disease then use of the fungicide as the borrow mixture that is 4 as 4 as 15 proportion the borrow mixture can be also used and the borrow mixture can be prepared by using the lime water and the copper sulphate and by in their proportion is about 4 as 4 as 50 in that proportion the borrow mixture they can be also used dithane 0.2 percent then phycol breast and copper sulphate mixture 
they can be also effective finally breeding of the disease resistance varieties it can also helpful for the controlling of the disease that is tick disease of the ground nut okay